So, so we have these readings, and they are linguistically irreconcilable. And what's interesting about them is they are even irreconcilable within themselves. So what people very often say with the readings, like, well, they're just dialects. Well, they're not. They really are not. We have very good descriptions from medieval grammarians who say, this tribe says it like this and this and this, and this other tribe does it that way, that way, and that way, and that way. And not a single one of the canonical readers follows any of those patterns. So we actually have a good idea what, for example, the dialect of Hijaz, so that's the region where, where uh, Muhammad had his prophecy, basically. Um, nothing looks like that dialect over there. They are all mixed with all kinds of different things. So every now and then you get a form and that's, you know, typically Hijazi. And then you get another thing that is typically non Hijazi and they both show up sometimes even within a single word. And oh, wow. if you would follow, follow the descriptions of the grammarians, you're like, well, I could read this word in like these five different ways. In this dialect, you would read it like this. In this dialect, you'd read it like this. In this dialect, you'd read it like this. And not a single one is the actual pronunciation that we have in the Quran. Um, so it's it's being mixed from all kinds of different places. Now the question is, to what extent is that being mixed? Is that part of the say the performance register that kind of develops over time, which is what I would say is the case? And to what extent is that was that part of the character of of the language of the Quran itself? So the, the language of revelation, so to speak. And uh, many scholars think that you know there was a kind of kind of high culture language, which was this kind of weird mixed thing that people used in poetry and also used to compose the Quran. Um, and I say, well, you know, there's something, that's something we can test. That, that's a testable hypothesis, why the Quran is very uh, helpfully written in rhyme. So I come at this as a linguist, um, which is not a background many people in, in, in Quranic studies have. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, well, I mean, that's very obvious. I mean, that's how we've always shown, you know, for example, to figure out how Shakespeare in English sounded and how that sounded different from us is by looking at his rhyme. We can see from the rhyme that he pronounced certain words differently than we do today. Right. And we can reconstruct what it sounded like. So you do this. Uh, and let's take the example, uh, Dunye, for example, that I just mentioned. Um, so you get this difference between vowels, the A and the A vowel, which some of the readers have, and then other readers do not have that. So some readers have more vowels than other readers. And we can look at the rhyme because those words show up in rhyme. And what we see is that words that are pronounced with A can only be pronounced with A, which clearly shows that that was a different sound from the A and that you're supposed to pronounce it dunye. So you can kind of look at the rhyme and say, okay, we can reconstruct what it sounded like. Now, not every single word sends in rhyme, of course, so we cannot completely know every single aspect of pronunciation, but we can really learn a, a couple of things. And once you start doing that, if you start looking, okay, what shows up in rhyme? How are words actually spelled where people say, well, these are differences between dialects? What we get, and we make this list, is okay. So not looking at what the reading traditions do, because the reading traditions sometimes just break rhyme because of these kinds of things. But what does the text actually tell us? What can they kind of tell us from the spelling? What can it tell us from the rhyme? And if you start doing that, you learn something very nice. Because what you get every single time when there's a place where we could check it in the text, so not on the reading tradition, but purely check it from the text, every single time the linguistic features that we find there are associated with Hejaz, uh, and specifically even the, the tribe of the Quraysh, which was the, the tribe of uh, Muhammad, every single time, which suggests to me that the Quran was not written down or even you know uh, revealed in some uh, poetic language uh, that all the Arabs were able to speak and com compose uh, poetry in. No, it was written in the local vernacular, which makes very good sense um, yeah. because, you know, people want to hear the revelation. And the Quran even goes out of his way to make this point. It says, look, our revelation is in in uh, in uh, Lisan Arabi, that is in uh, the Arabic language, uh, so that you may understand the clear Arabic language. Uh, clearly, and it's even saying, and it's not foreign. Clearly, making I, I would say, and this is this is a thought not not by me, but uh, uh, written up by Ahmad Al Jalad, who said, "Look, um, it is not saying this text is in a magical poetic language that people use. No, it's saying it is in a vernacular, unlike the Bible, which is in Aramaic or Greek, right? Unlike uh, the Hebrew Bible, which is in Hebrew." Um, this text is actually one you can actually understand. So, you know, when I start speaking this text and tell you about these things, you can hear directly what it means. Um, I think that that is very good. And I think that is right. If you actually look at the text 
that's what you see. What's more, more interesting even, there's traditions, and pretty good traditions, uh, of the early compilation of the Othmanic texts, where a couple of the people are in disagreement with each other how they're supposed to write a certain word. Um, and then they go to Othman and say, okay, what should we be doing? And he says, look, you need to write down the, the, the Quran in the dialect of the Quraysh, because that is how it was revealed. Well, if that's true, like, assuming that's true, which yeah, yeah. I think is true actually in this case, but um, if that's true, that's not what people are reciting today. What they're reciting today absolutely is not the dialect of the Quraysh at all. Um, so clearly something changed. The language that the Quran is recited in has indeed been changed to something much closer to like the language of poetry and these kinds of things. But it seems to have originally been composed and written down in the dialect of the Quraysh. 